Hello, everybody. Thanks again for joining us today. My name is Howie Heckman, uh, one of the developers here at PTS. Today, I'm excited to uh, give you guys a rundown of uh, Clearstream version 7.0 and all of the new features uh, that we've added to the software uh, in this major release. So again, thanks for joining us. Uh, as always, at the end of the webinar today, we will have a question and answer period. So if you have any questions as I'm going through anything, or maybe would like some further um, elaboration on some of the features, uh, please send them on over in the question panel. I'll, I'll read them aloud uh, and answer them that way. So just uh, wait till the end of the webinar to send those on over. Uh, so a little bit about what we um, are going to show you today uh, on today's agenda. First is uh, well, all of the new features for 7.0, uh, but those include a new subscription model that lowers your uh, upfront costs for getting into RFID, uh, Bluetooth beacons, um, or any of the devices that the Clearstream application supports. Uh, so the subscription model allows you to um, sign up for a subscription, which gives you additional features through a web browser to see the status and health of your system. And I'll kind of go through uh, that uh, web portal um, and kind of show you the different features of that as well uh, with the presentation today. Uh, second up, we have the BLE zoning or BLE beacon zoning. Now this is a really cool feature for version 7.0. And uh, I'm going to show you a live demonstration of this, but it really allows you to take Bluetooth beacons <clears throat> and capture their zones or locations that they're in without throughout a facility. Um, so very easily you can set up a system within Clearstream that allows you to track these beacons as they move from room to room or location to location uh, and see exactly where they are in real time. Uh, so I'll go through a setup of that today and show you how that works as well. Uh, another feature in 7.0, device grouping. Um, this simply allows uh, for easier setup within Clearstream. So a lot of our um, users um, and integrators have set up Clearstream on larger installations over the years, and they have um, had to set up individual readers and map them to individual destinations. Uh, with the grouping, uh, it's something that we added from listening to the feedback in that whole process to make it a little bit simpler in the setup. Um, so it allows you to define a group of readers with the same configurations that may be all going to the same destination. So let's say you have 100 RFID readers that are all pointing to the same database table. You can now through a single group map that entire 100 readers to the destination. You no longer have to go through and map each individual one. And it also saves you on the setup going forward if you make any changes. You just have to change the mapping of the group rather than all of the individual readers. Uh, finally, another feature that we added into version 7.0, really from feedback from our users, is what we're calling quick scan. Um, but it's really keyboard emulation for any of the devices that we support uh, within Clearstream. And it's kind of a cool feature in that you can take an RFID reader from any manufacturer um, and or Bluetooth gateway even or uh, dummy barcode scanners, and you can map them as keyboard input into a PC. Uh, so quickly, you can set up these RFID readers to scan RFID tag data format the tag data as you need it, and enter it right where the cursor is loaded within your Windows machine uh, to scan RFID tags. And really what that allows you to do is take existing software, maybe even legacy software that doesn't have integrations into RFID or some of the other devices that we support, and allows you to add that into those systems. Um, and I'll show you a live demonstration of that as well. Um, okay, so the uh, subscription model within Clearstream. So in the past, we had offered Clearstream as a perpetual model where you add a number of licenses um, of readers or devices into your Clearstream configuration. Uh, Clearstream now supports subscription licensing. And really what this gives you, um, or the flexibility that it adds to Clearstream is uh, using our online web portal to see the status of your system. Um, so you can see which devices are started, stopped, any of them that happen to be in an error state. Maybe they got disconnected due, an, due to a network failure. Um, or something like that, you can all um, view that from any web-enabled device. So if you have a large system of RFID readers or Bluetooth gateways, <clears throat> um, you can now log into the subscription portal and you can see if they're all successfully online and running um, or if there's any issues with your system. So in the past, you might have to do something like RDP to the, the machine that's running Clearstream um, to, to check on the health of that. Also, if any of you are familiar with using the Clearstream Windows service, it was even a little trickier to see the status of your readers because it was running as an application behind the scenes. So you either have to check, at the, check to the event logs, look at the device itself to see if it's actively scanning for tags, or you had to maybe build something using our API that would show you the current status of those readers. 
Now you can actually just log into the subscriptions portal website uh, and see all your devices right there. So you can see everything online. They're nicely labeled in green or red if there's an error, things like that. So you can quickly see the status of all of your devices. Um, on top of that, if you're using our Clearstream onboard application, which any of you are familiar with that, that is an application that runs directly on the reader itself as kind of a headless Clearstream that runs on uh, different Zebra fixed RFID readers. The configuration for those applications are all done with the, in the cloud as well. Um, so you configure and you provision those devices inside of that cloud subscription portal, and then those devices will be sending the tag data to wherever you define. Uh, finally, with your subscription pricing, you also get comprehensive full support for all of your devices and your uh, Clearstream 7.0 application. So you're able to um, converse with our, our tech support team here, go, log into our open office um, hours where we will answer any questions that you may have there. And that's all included within the Clearstream uh, subscription pricing uh, that you get um, as a subscription model. Uh, one other thing I would like to mention about that as well is for pilot programs and things like that, subscription models really make sense because you can kind of pay for a lower upfront cost to test out the applications, test out the technology for people that are just getting into RFID or Bluetooth beaconing. Um, you can uh, sign up for a subscription model to um, do pilot pro uh, programs and setups where you can see how the technology works in your environment. Um, so it's a good way really to get started uh, and is more flexible than purchasing a full license uh, for the equipment. Uh, on my next screen here, um, I just have a couple screenshots of the subscription portal and what it looks like. Now I'll jump into this in a second anyway. I'm going to jump out of the PowerPoint and kind of do a live demonstration. Um, but from this, you can see that it shows you the status of all of your readers, what you have configured in your environment, um, and what's enabled and disabled. Um, one of the other benefits of this subscription model is in the past, if you were using perpetual licenses and you needed to transfer licenses from one device to another, you'd really have to open up a ticket with us, so it would require a support contract, uh, and then you'd need to replace the old device with the new device. So you'd have to come to us to request to change those um, those uh, readers that are maybe out for repair or something like that or being swapped out. Now you can do all of that and manage all of your devices by uh, yourself inside of the Clearstream subscription portal. Um, so I'll go ahead and show that to you in just a minute um, when I jump out of the PowerPoint here. Uh, here's just kind of an overview of some of the new features that I'm going to show you in a minute, but the quick scan or keyboard emulation. Um, this really, again, allows you to type data into any application. So we've done some videos here, cool videos of scanning RFID tags into QuickBooks um, or other applications like that where they may not necessarily have had RFID scanning built in in the past, but you can add RFID scanning using this keyboard emulation within Clearstream. And it's really easily configurable. Um, one of the great things about it, even though some manufacturers do actually support this with their readers, this will support any device that Clearstream RFID support. So it can be Zebra readers, Impinge readers, uh, Alien or FIG readers. Any one of those are able to be used as keyboard input into a pre-existing system. Um, the demo that we did here was a simple scanning of serial numbers onto a packing list within Clearstream, um, which you may have done maybe in the past as uh, starting off in that video as typing those values into it, or maybe taking a dummy barcode scanner. Uh, this will allow you to take it to um, RFID and scan those RFID tags for serialized data into something like QuickBooks or some maybe older system that doesn't have RFID um, support built in. Uh, the device grouping, again, I'm going to show you that actually in tandem with the BLE zoning that's below it, but it allows you to group devices. And really the biggest benefit of that um, feature is it allows you to take, say, 100 devices again, put them into a single group, and map that one group to a destination. So it would effectively hooks up all 100 of those devices to the same database table, say. So they're all configured in one uh, shot, and you don't have to go through and individually map each one of those readers. Uh, and really one of the coolest features for version seven is the BLE zoning. Um, so this enables easy real-time tracking of tagged assets on the move. So we made a video here. If you guys haven't seen it, go to our Clearstream uh, YouTube channel to check out our latest video uh, of BLE tracking where we had some of our um, doggy friends here in the office tracking, uh, being tracked as they move throughout our offices. Um, you can see from the screenshot here 
Uh, Larry on the left-hand side there has the BLE gate uh, beacon hanging from his collar, and we were tracking him as he moves throughout the offices. Um, but with the BLE zone tracking, you get that real-time data collection where you can see where something is in a facility based on a zone. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually show you a configured project to do that, and I'll walk through the offices here uh, with one of the beacons. Uh, the uh, picture on the bottom there is an actual beacon. That's a zebra beacon that we used for the, the video uh, with Larry and Winston, the two dogs there in the, in the screenshot. Um, and it has like a little lanyard attachment so you can attach it to different things. Uh, and finally, I did want to, before I jump out to the live demo, just talk a little bit about the setup for the BLE zoning because I don't have cameras set up right now inside of our offices here to show you this. But the basic process is that you install these BLE gateways and the gateways here, here's just some pick the screenshots of them. Um, are uh, usually PoE. Uh, they're more affordable type devices than fixed RFID. So you can buy one of these for each area you'd like to track. Uh, they're generally PoE, so you can plug them in with one cable, not all of them, but you can plug them in with one cable and they'll come on your network. So you would just take those gateways as you see here and install them in each, each area. So in our offices here, we actually have a couple of them that are just affixed to the ceiling. They're hooked up to PoE, and we quickly set up the video for the uh, tracking uh, for, for the dogs as they run throughout the, the room, the rooms, um, and quickly and easily configure that using Clearstream. Uh, and then the process is once you have those gateways attached to the network, you would define what are called what we call zones. Each zone is one gateway. So let's just say you wanted to track a zone and say my office here you would install one gateway in it, and then go ahead and define the size of the zone in meters. So I would install this gateway in the middle of the, uh, the location, um, up in the ceiling, or could be on the side or something like that. And then you define the radius from that as the size of the zone. So let's just say a couple of meters uh, is the size of this zone. And then Clearstream will calculate once you go within that zone to mark it at that location in your database. Uh, so you do that for each gateway that you have configured. I happen to have four set up right now that I'll go ahead and um, kind of demonstrate in a minute. But those are just defined in, in Clearstream as, as different zones with different sizes. So a bigger room might have a larger size based on meters, a smaller zone um, set up with uh, less space. And they can be relatively close zones. One of the, uh, a, few, a few of the gateways I have here are no, no further than, say, 12 to 15 feet apart. And I just defined them as smaller zones in meters um, for each one of those areas that I want to track. And then Clearstream behind the scenes is calculating which zone that beacon is in as it moves throughout the facility. Uh, finally, I only have one uh, picture here of the Zebra beacon, but there's all a bunch of types of uh, beacons that you can get. You can get them with replaceable batteries. You can get them with um, non-replaceable batteries. You can get them at different sizes. You can get some that plug into a USB port, things like that are powered by the USB port, things like that. Um, but those beacons are generally all configurable, so you can ping out different um, at different rates, at different uh, power levels, so you can increase battery life, you can decrease battery life if you wanted to improve accuracy, so if you need it to a um, more fine-tuned location. Um, and generally, these beacons would be used to track high-value assets or personnel. Um, so you would attach them to something that you really need to track throughout a facility. Um, a couple of notes on these, the battery life on the beacons range really from anywhere to, if you're pinging out quite a bit, 10, 20 times a second, you could have a few months of battery life. Uh, some of the beacons, if you ping out just once every few seconds, they can go up to a number of years, two to five years, and, and even longer than that if you reduce it, uh, the amount of time that it's pinging out. So I will show you that in just a minute um, as to how that all works within Clearstream. Okay, so I think that's all I have here for the slides. I'm gonna hop out of the PowerPoint. Okay, and uh, before I do a live demo, I did actually want to mention that um, if you go to clearstreamrfid.com, you guys can trial everything that you see here today. So we offer a free download of the application. So you can see right on the home screen up at the top right or wherever these orange buttons are, you can go ahead and download the software. And everything I show you today is available as a free trial. Um, I will make note that you can either request a trial code um, which will give you access to a perpetual type trial where you don't have access to the dashboard, the online dashboard. But if you wanna trial the subscriptions um, website and web console, 
reach out to your sales rep and they will set you up with a free trial through the web portal and they will issue you a username and password so you can log into the portal. So just keep note of that is after you install it, you can either just go ahead with the trial um, as you always have been, have with the previous versions of the software or just request from us a free trial of the subscriptions portal, um, which is what you'll kind of see me setting up today uh, for, for the application. But just go to our website, go to free download there. It'll download the latest version of the software and you can go ahead and demo everything that I'm going to show you today. And that's at clearstreamrfid.com. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let me jump over to the, uh, the subscriptions portal because um, I want to show you this in tandem with what I configure within uh, Clearstream. So here it is at subscriptions.clearstreamrfid.com. I'm just going to go ahead and log in with my uh, username and password. Uh, and right now I don't have anything configured. So when I get to my dashboard here, there's this device section that you can see right here. And you can see I don't have, currently have any devices configured. However, I do have a subscription for 11 uh, devices. So I can go ahead and actually start adding 11 devices to this. But I don't have anything configured at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding some to Clearstream. Uh, now, the first thing I thought I'd show you today is actually the, um, the, the quick scan or the keyboard emulation option. Um, that one's a quick one to show you guys to see how it works. It'll also show you how the uh, reader that I add to be a keyboard to my PC here gets added over to the script subscription portal, and you can see the current status of that reader. So the first thing I need to do is open up Clearstream 7. So I have that here. Uh, if you have a either trial subscription or your, uh, you've purchased a subscription of the software, the only thing you need to do is go up to tools, registration slash subscription, click on the registration subscription tab, and then enter your username and password again that you log in with on the, uh, the web portal. So I'll go ahead and enter that information. Uh, I can hit login here just to test my login and you can see login, login is successful. And at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and close that dialog. So I'm all hooked up here. So now my Clearstream install is now hooked up to the dashboard, uh, to that web portal um, on the website. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up. I have an FX9600 from Zebra here. I wanna hook that up as a keyboard to uh, just uh, Windows Notepad. So I have a Windows Notepad form here and I wanna start scanning RFID tags and entering them into this, this, uh, this file here. So to do that, first thing I need to do is, as always, add a source of tag data, and that's gonna be my um, Zebra FX9600. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit add for my device configuration. And really here, you can select whatever type of manufacturer you guys are looking to do. It could be uh, LORP, Intermec, Impinge, and so on. It could be any one of these devices. But for today, I have a FX9600 sitting next to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Um, I happen to know the IP address of my reader. But if you don't know it, you can hit this find button here. It will search your network and try to find a Zebra reader in this case uh, to add to your configuration. I'll go ahead and click out of it. I can see that I successfully connected to that reader because I got the MAC address of the reader, the device ID here. And the only other thing I want to do for this demo um, is actually power the uh, scanner way down. So I'm going to go ahead to the antennas, add the one antenna that I have to this and put it to minimum power because I don't want to scan everything in my office here. It'll start typing away into every place I have this cursor blinking. Um, so I'm going to put it down to a low power so that I have to take a tag and put it on the antenna before it enters into my notepad. So I'll go ahead and just set that. And that's the only thing I want to do for my, uh, my uh, reader here. So now I have that one reader hooked up as a source of the tag data. So now my destination is going to be a keyboard. So to do that, you go to the destination type and you want to hit custom endpoint. Okay, now custom endpoint is actually a couple different things. Um, it allows you to send tag data to the keyboard, just like I'm going to do it now, but it also does another couple cool things where you can set it, uh, send it as an email. So imagine not only just sending tag data to a keyboard, but you could also send out an email of your tag data, or you can send out a, to a web service post. <clears throat> so this also gives you the ability to post to a, like a, a HTTP endpoint that maybe has a payload of JSON or XML type data of your uh, RFID data. So that the custom endpoint is a couple of different things, but this is where the keyboard endpoint or keyboard emulation endpoint is added. So the first thing I want to do is actually select a report. Now the report defines what this data is going to look like when it's typed out. Now there's a couple samples that come with Clearstream. So if you hit the open button here, you'll see a samples folder. 
And there's a couple of these sample ones that come uh, with the app. Uh, there's a keyboard sample and there's also a keyboard with uh, EPC only, but I'm gonna select the keyboard sample. Uh, and really, again, that defines what it looks like when it gets typed into the field. And you can make that anything you want. You could add all the stuff that you'd like to this so that every time a tag is scanned, there's extra stuff being typed out. Uh, but these samples can get you started with entering that data. Um, the next thing I need to do is select what that endpoint is. So in this case, it's going to be the keyboard emulation mode. So I'm just gonna select that and hit done. So now I'm basically reading RFID tags, sending them to a custom endpoint, formatting them based on this report that I selected, and then sending it to the keyboard. Um, finally, I just wanna make my mappings correct down here. So I have on the destination side, EPC, date time, and so on. I'm just gonna marry these up one to one. So I'm gonna go ahead, date time to date time. I believe it's reader name to device antenna to antenna and tag event to tag event. Okay, so that's all I need to do. And now I can actually go over to my um, start stop form and start up this reader. So I'm gonna hit start to this. One thing you'll notice when I did that is if I go over to the web portal, you can actually see it was just added automatically to the web portal and it's marked as started. So if I go back now and hit stop, You'll see now when that reports its state back to the website, you'll see it goes to the stopped state automatically on the website. So you can imagine this being in an environment with a number of readers and as they're being used out in the environment, you can see if they're started, stopped or in an error state. If they're in an error state, they'll pop up as red here to indicate that there's some kind of problem with this reader that you should go ahead and correct. Maybe it's the uh, your network connection has gone down or something like that, it will report that status then here in the last status. But for me, if I just go ahead, go start and stop, when I hit start, it reports that back to the website as being started. So finally, just to show you how this feature works, I'm gonna put the cursor in my notepad field here. I'm gonna take a tag and go ahead and put it on the uh, device here so that it reads that tag and uh, types it in, into notepad. Now I'm gonna actually take four tags I have a, uh, just a roll of uh, four tags here. I'll put it over the antenna and you can see it types out those four tags as well. So it goes, it just puts these in as keyboard data to wherever the cursor currently is blinking. So it would allow you to take any um, existing application that maybe doesn't have RFID built into it. It can now type it, type these values into that application. So maybe imagine web forms that you're currently using with uh, maybe a dummy barcode scanner. And now you want to leverage RFID you could just, without any modifications to that web form, add Clearstream as configured for a keyboard, and you can start scanning tags into that form, just as you would maybe a dummy barcode scanner. It gives you that type of flexibility. So I'll just take these four again, and uh, go ahead and scan them, uh, and they get entered into that as keyboard data. Okay, and you can see it's based off of my input here. So I have the tag uh, EPC value, I have the, the uh, device name that was specified within Clearstream. You can see Clearstream device one, you can name that whatever you'd like. It could be workstation one, uh, desk one, anything like that. The antenna that read the tag, I only have one antenna hooked up to it. Uh, the, the tag event, which is new tag visible, meaning it was a tag that was just scanned. And then the date timestamp of when it was uh, scanned and entered into the text field here. Okay, so it's a cool new feature with Clearstream. Again, the biggest flexibility with this, uh, as opposed to some other uh, manufacturers that do this, is that it really works with any of the equipment that Clearstream supports. So it could be Zebra readers, it can be Impinge, all of that sort of stuff. It doesn't really matter what it is. You can map it to keyboard data on the destination side. And as we add new hardware, uh, you can go ahead and um, use that new hardware with the same feature for, key, for input. So just as in the last release of Clearstream, Clearstream 6.5, we added Cognex dummy barcode scanners, um, which you know can be affixed to like a conveyor belt for rapid R uh, barcode scanning. That's a, a piece of equipment that could be sending uh, data to Clearstream and Clearstream maps it to something. Well, it could be mapped now to, um, to keyboard input just as this is done here. Let me go ahead and move this out of the way. Okay, so. The next thing I thought I'd do is go ahead and um, configure a new project. And with my new project, I wanna go ahead, I'm actually gonna use one that's already been configured, but um, the new project will be a BLE zone uh, project, which I just opened here. 
And the project is already configured for the BLE zoning. And this is really the project that we used for that tracking in the video with the dogs. Uh, but I'm gonna kind of talk to you about how this was set up so that you guys can do it yourselves for quickly configuring um, BLE zone tracking within Clearstream 7. So this also leverages the idea of the groups. Uh, so just to talk about that quickly, you can see in my configuration, I have one um, source, PTS offices, and one destination, BLE zone tracking on the destination side here. So I've only mapped one thing to the destination, but actually this one thing here, this group, in this case, PTS offices, is made up of four BLE gateways. Um, so those BLE gateways have all been added to the group for PTS offices, and then that PTS offices has all been mapped to the same destination. Uh, so just to see that, if I click on devices here, you can see I have one group, and inside of that group, if I look at the device list, you can see I have the Heckman office, tech room, demo room, and conference room. So I have these different zones configured, or BLE gateways that are zones, configured within this one group. The one group is then mapped to the zone tracking database table. <clears throat> um, this zone tracking database table is something you guys can use for your own testing. It comes with Clearstream and it's installed inside of the data folder uh, for Clearstream uh, where it's installed. And you can use it for your own testing if you'd like. Uh, and it's a Microsoft Access database table uh, that you can send the tag uh, information to. So a little bit about this setup. So I have one group again, PTS offices. And I have four individual uh, BLE gateways. And these are configured just like the RFID um, readers. So you would hit add and then select BLE beacon rather than say zebra or intermec or anything like that. You'd select BLE beacon. So I did that four times. The only thing you need to do is manually select the, um, or manually enter the MAC addresses for each one of these gateways. So imagine once you install them in the zones, you would come here select the four gateways, name them, and just marry them up by this MAC address here. Put the MAC address, which is generally printed on the devices, on these um, BLE gateways, right here in the device ID list. Finally, for each one of these configurations, there's a couple things set up. Um, the biggest thing here is that in the custom events area, I have a, uh, the event is gonna fire when the distance from the beacon to this gateway is less than one and a half meters. Same thing for the other ones. I think I configured the same for each one of them. Distance is less than one and a half meters. See if any of these are bigger. One and a half meters and then one and a half meters. So they're all set up for distance is less than one and a half meters from each one of these gateways. That is an event that's used in Clearstream to indicate it just moved into this zone. So it's reported to the destination as this beacon being loaded and located at a new location. A um, couple things about that. It's not simply just doing a distance. I mean, it is calculating distance. Clearstream is handling that for you. It's calculating the relative distance between the beacon and the gateways. It also averages those distances out. You can see I have a seven value up here for this average. And that smooths the data that's coming out from this gateway a little bit. So it makes it more accurate. So you have to get seven hits on this beacon for it to be reported as an event. It has to all be averaged for the distance for each one of those seven events that are sent to the, uh, that are recorded by Clearstream. And then it has to average them below uh, less than one and a half meters for it to be then marked as a event that, hey, it just entered this zone. Uh, and then it gets sent to the database. And each one of these are configured in the same way. So we want a minimum beacon reads of seven and we're gonna average the distance. And if that distance happens to be less than, uh, less than or equal to one and a half meters, report it as an event to our destination. So basically make a new entry into the database saying, hey, this beacon one, two, three has now been located at this location. Uh, finally, for this one, I do have uh, some beacon filtering set up. I'm only tracking uh, one type of beacon that's going throughout my environment. So in my case, it's a UUID. Um, so those of you who are maybe not familiar with um, beacons, they can ping out an identifier that's maybe a group identifier uh, and we can filter on that. So in our case, we had a couple of beacons that were ha that their group identifier, this UUID, was all the same for each dog that was walking throughout the facility, and we were tracking only those. Because you could otherwise get a lot of other beacons in your environment that maybe are not um, the ones you're intending to track. So let me jump back over. So that, that's the configuration. Each one of those is configured to report 
beacons if the distance is within that amount of um, that short of a distance between each gateway, and it sends those entries over to the BLE zone tracking side here uh, in the database. So <clears throat> I can go ahead and start this up. Now, when you're starting a group, it'll start all of the child devices inside of that group. So you can see they all went to start here. On the, uh, the cloud side, you can see it just added all four of those devices that I have configured. So each one of these gateways, which is now running, is uh, marked as green inside of the, the console here. So it added those automatically. I also got one hit into the database because I have this beacon sitting next to me, next to the uh, Heckman office gateway. If I go to the data, you can see the uh, location of my beacon is currently in the Heckman office location here. Uh, if I were to move this, it'll make a new entry if it gets within those rules of the next zone. It'll be recorded at the next zone as being at that location. So to make this a little bit um, easier to see and visualize, we, did, we do actually have an EXE that's installed with Clearstream called the Zone Tracker. And just to show you that, if you go to the Clearstream RFID 7 install location, there's a Clearstream ZT um, app. Now this app, if you open it up, it shows you where the most recent beacon is and in real time. So if I go to file, uh, or need, what I need to do is open my project. So you can see my project right now is called Overhead Gateway Demo. So those are the gateways that I define. So I just come into this app here and say File Open. And I select my Overhead Gateway Demo and hit Open there. And here it creates a window for each zone that you have configured. So I have conference room, tech room, demo room, and Heckman office. So now you can see this beacon is currently in uh, my office here. Uh, and when it was last recorded. So I can see in real time that it's here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the, ga the beacon that I have and actually walk out of my office. Now I'm walking away from my screen here, um, but I'm gonna walk into the conference room. So, so I'm just gonna walk away from my office. I'm gonna bring this into the other location just to show you this. Now I'm just carrying this beacon and it's the same type of beacon I showed you in the screenshot there. I'm walking into the, con into the um, conference room and I'm just putting that beacon down. I'm walking back. And these zones are relatively close to one another. So you can see kind of the, the, the um, distance they can be. It doesn't have to be a very large facility in order to, yes, okay. I'm back to my desk here. And now I can see it's currently recording it in the conference room. In the background, you can also see that it has a tag sent to the destination. So if I go to look at that data, I can see this beacon has been at two locations. It went from Heckman office at such and such time, and then it went into the conference room. And just to finish that out, I will go ahead and move this uh, beacon. I'm gonna go from uh, the conference room, I'm gonna go to the demo room, go back to the conference room because they're next to each other, and then back over to my office here. So I'm gonna walk back in there and grab this beacon, which is now sitting on the conference table. And this would be cool if we had the, uh, a video set up so you can see me doing this, but you can actually take a look at the video we did online with the dogs running throughout the office to kind of get a better idea. Uh, so I'm walking now into the demo room um, and it will record it into the demo room. I'm gonna move back over into the conference room. And now I'm not looking at my screen, so I do apologize if it's not popping up there, but I should be now in the conference room. Now I'm gonna go ahead and walk back into my office. And when I'm back in here, you'll see the beacon switches back over to Heckman office. And you can hear I closed the door there and then the beacon switched into the office. So this again, that was a live demo. Um, it recorded as I went through each one of those zones. Uh, let me go ahead and stop my group. And actually you can see that now they all go to stop in the web portal. And if I go to the database, it kept a recording of where this thing went. So I went Heckman office, conference room, demo room, conference room, Heckman office. So I can see a perfect trail of where this beacon's been throughout my facility um, by using this BLE zone tracking. Now, again, the, the hardware for this is relatively affordable. Um, these gateways are inexpensive. They can be easily installed. And generally, the testing for this is a lot less involved than, say, an RFID setup. 
Uh, with RFID, there's a lot of factors at play, and some of this is, does affect BLE tracking as well. Um, but there's a lot of factors of environment and equipment that's being tracked. You know, a lot of metal in the environment or liquid in the environment really affects the read range, the read performance of that. The human body drastically affects RFID tag scanning. So if you have a RFID tag and you want to use that to track someone, <clears throat> if the human body is between that tag and the antenna, you won't get the read of that tag. With these BLE beacons, you don't have to worry about that because it's a, um, a battery operated transmitter. Uh, that transmits in a just universal direction from where that location is and it's being picked up by these gateways. Um, so there's less testing involved in setting this up. Uh, when we set these gateways up at, the, at our facilities here, we just kind of attach them to the ceiling, Velcro them up uh, to the drop ceiling and uh, did PoE to them. There was no testing of it. It was just put it in the middle of the room and you know slap it on the ceiling and then set up the zones in Clearstream to say, hey, this zone is this big, this zone is this big and so on. Um, and map that each match, put those gateways into the group and map the group to the destination. And then if you want, you can use this zone tracker tool to see where the, the beacon is, or you can just record the transactions as is moving throughout your facility here uh, from each one of the zones. <clears throat> um, so it's a really cool demo. Um, it's a really great technology um, that is, is, is easily configurable and affordable. Um, the one, note on the beacon side is obviously the beacons are battery powered so there is maintenance on those and they're generally and they are more expensive than most RFID tags um, so it really works well in, in uh, situations when you want to track high value assets or personnel or something like that that's critical to tracking exactly where that item is as it moves throughout a facility um, because there are things like battery maintenance and things like that too um, that you have to take into mind when you are uh, setting up a, a um, set up like this. Uh, some of the batteries, again, they last for years, so it may not may not matter, um, but you do have to take that into consideration. Okay, so those are the main features, excuse me, I did want to go through in Clearstream 7.0. So really the, the subscription uh, licensing where you can see the ha health and status of your system through the web portal. You can manage all of your readers here uh, and configure everything uh, through this web console. Uh, the second was the uh, keyboard emulation, being able to take any of the equipment that Clearstream RFID um, supports and mapping those uh, devices as keyboard entry into a Windows PC. And finally, the BLE zone tracking, um, where you can uh, track these beacons as they move throughout a facility using this zone calculation that's done within Clearstream. So I'm going to jump back over to the PowerPoint at this point. I think the next slide is the questions. Uh, let me swap this around. Is the question. So let me see. So if you guys have any questions, <coughs> I apologize for hopping right into that because you might not have been ready. But if you have any questions, please uh, send them over in the question panel. Um, Okay, first question I hear, have here, a great question. Um, are small zone overlaps to be avoided in the setup or are they not causing issues? So this is a great question because the zones I have configured here, like I mentioned, the two, the, the, um, the demo room and the conference room are right next to each other. Uh, and so the gateways are literally 12 feet apart, only a couple meters apart, uh, but you're still able to track which zone they are in. Um, and these gateways and beacons have a 300 foot read range. So that's a huge overlap in the distance between the, uh, what's possible between that gateway and that beacon. But because Clearstream has been defined to only record this as an event where the beacon is averaging one and a half meters or less over seven hits from that beacon, it's ignoring anything else that's outside of that. So even though these zones are really overlapping themselves probably by 90%, um, it doesn't matter because it's filtering all of that noise out when it's getting hits on these beacons when it's further away. So I'm in my office here, which is a little bit further away from the demo room and the conference room, but those demo room and conference room gateways are still getting hits on this beacon. They're still recording it. However, when it's doing the calculation for distance, it's getting a much higher distance. So it's ignoring it as an event to be sent to the, to the destination. Um, so those types of issues aren't necessarily a big deal. Um, you obviously would want to take them into consideration to make the zones as tight as you need them to be. If you define the 
zones too loosely, then you might run into problems of it maybe flickering between zones. Um, but you would just want to make sure that you define, define the zone to be small enough to contain those uh, deacons as they're being hit. But, uh, so great question. Uh, I hope that elaborates on a little bit more. Uh, another question just popped up here. What BLE gateways do you support? <coughs> so uh, we offer a number of different uh, supported gateways um, from the screenshots that I show you there. It's a, a PTS or a menu gateway, um, a blue cats. Uh, we offer the blue cats gateways, which are nice smaller size gateways that you can install throughout a facility. Uh, we also support blue epic gateways um, within Clearstream as well. So any one of those types of devices you can use. Uh, if you do have any gateways that you know of that you would like us to add support for, please send them on over, uh, follow up with us after the um, webinar today. Uh, we generally are trying to add as many different manufacturers of the gateways as possible because we know those can be, um, there can be a lot of different ones out there that maybe uh, people aren't aware of. But if you have any ones in particular that you'd like added to Clearstream, please let us know. Okay, another question here. Can the keyboard emulation only print EPCs? So, uh, yes, and I actually kind of briefly touched on that within Clearstream. Um, let me open that back up. So, on the keyboard emulation side, like I mentioned, you can select a report which defines what the output looks like. The one I happen to select from the samples was the uh, keyboard sample. And that one includes a couple different things. It's the EPC, it's the reader name, it's the tag event, it's a date timestamp. And it takes all of those values and types them into a field with tabs between them. So it puts like a tab delimited um, line in there. Um, there is a sample actually that does come with Clearstream. It's either this one or this one. Uh, I have a couple extras on my PC here, but um, there's one that's labeled as EPC only. And all that does is it tells the, when the, <coughs> tag is read by the reader and sent to Clearstream, Clearstream then formats it as simply an EPC with, a, with an enter key at the end of it. So it just types out the, the EPC values. And you can really change that to anything you'd like. It could be a JSON file that you um, need to output as XML. Um, now those wouldn't typically go to a, a keyboard, uh, but it, that format can define what that output looks like to really anything that you need it to be. JSON data, uh, just EPCs, EPC and date time stamped with a tab character in between, an XML document, anything like that, you could, um, could write out that type data. But great question. Okay, question here. Has there been any new device support for Clearstream Onboard? Um, so another good question. Um, so as you know, as you guys briefly touched on in the website, Clearstream Onboard is an application, not this Clearstream here, but it's a Clearstream that runs on an embedded reader. So it runs right on the reader itself. It offers a couple uh, good features that can suit different types of installations. Um, being as the application is running directly on the fixed reader, it lends itself to being very useful for like a remote installation. So maybe you have an RFID kiosk set up somewhere that's just that, that device is hooked up to the internet. Well, Clearstream RFID can be loaded on that reader, scan for tags, store them on the reader itself, and then when it has internet access back to some location, it batch sends over those tags. So it's really good for those not like um, situations where the reader's not always online. It might be offline for a little while because the internet's a little flaky or Wi-Fi or something like that. It can store and forward tag data to some destination. Um, so that application right now, we currently only support the Zebra FX 7500 and 9600 readers. However, we are looking and doing preliminary work for in supporting the impinge readers, uh, specifically the R700, their latest device. So uh, keep an eye on that, that um, once we uh, release an update to the Clearstream onboard application. <clears throat> okay, I have a question that just popped up here. What happens uh, if you do not have a reader brand listed in the configuration option? It's a good question. So let me just maybe talk to that a little bit. If I go to the devices tab here, um, when I hit add, these are all the things that we support as source of data in Clearstream. Um, so there's a number of readers uh, that we support natively, Zebra, FIG, Alien, and so on. And you can select your reader type. If you don't see your reader type in this list, we do support LLRP, low level reader protocol. And that 
option is kind of an industry standard for communication with fixed RFID readers. So if you don't see a fixed RFID reader in this list here, the manufacturer type that you'd like, you can try LLRP or check the specs on the reader that you're trying to use uh, for support for LLRP. And if so, just go ahead and use that and it should work within Clearstream. If it's something else like a, a Bluetooth gateway that you'd like to add support to, you'd have to reach out to us to see if we could support it. Um, but go ahead and follow up with those types of manufacturers because again, we're looking to add additional BLE gateway options into Clearstream uh, because we know there are tons out there, um, tons of random ones out there as well. Uh, but if you have one specifically that you'd like uh, to be added into Clearstream, reach out to us after the webinar today. We'd be glad to take a look at, uh, at what it will take to add it to the environment. But for fixed RFID, if you don't see your manufacturer here, check to see if your um, equipment supports LLRP. If it does, you can use that as your source type. Any other questions? Here's one that just popped up. What kind of beacons are supported? Anything we need to look out for when choosing them? Uh, okay, another good question. So uh, the beacons, just like the gateways, there's a lot of options out there. Uh, I think most of the gateway manufacturers also support their own, or manufacture their own uh, beacons. Um, <clears throat> so really the only thing you need to look out for on the beacon side is that it supports one of two protocols, and that's uh, iBeacon, the iBeacon standard, which is an Apple standard for beacons, or Eddystone, which is a Google standard for beacons. So really just look at the specs on the beacons you'd like to use and just see if it supports that. Now, I would probably say 99% of them, unless it's some type of proprietary beacon, support both of those protocols. And usually within those beacons, um, you it's configurable as to what they even use. So just for instance, this Zebra beacon that I've configured here, Zebra provides an app for configuring the beacons. So you can go ahead and use a mobile device to configure what protocol it uses, iBeacon, Eddystone, um, how often it pings out, uh, how strongly it pings out, things like that, which affect the battery life. Um, but there's usually an app with the beacons that allow you to configure them. So really the important things to look out for when you're choosing a beacon, if you're using Clearstream, is to see if it supports iBeacon or Eddystone. Um, both of them have pretty much the same type of options and identifier for the beacon, things like that. Um, but just take a look at that. It supports one of those two, which again, it would be 99% of the beacons out there support either one of those. Uh, finally, some other key considerations are the battery life and whether or not the battery is replaceable. Um, if it's something you don't want anybody tampering with, the Zebra beacons are um, sealed, so you can't really tamper with the beacon without probably destroying it. Um, but you also can't replace the battery. So if you have a five-year battery life, depending on the settings you choose, um, you know, after five years, you would have to replace that beacon with a new one because um, you can't replace the battery. But other ones do allow you to uh, offer the battery support. So you can, you know, pop them open and put in a new coin uh, cell battery and, uh, and continue on with them that way. All right, any other questions? <clears throat> I'm going to bring up the PowerPoint here, but please send over any questions you may have as I do that. Okay, I don't see any questions, but um, I, as always, just send them over if you have them. Um, if I do happen to miss any ones that you guys send over, I don't think I have so far, but uh, please follow up with us. Um, so... Here's our contact information. If you do have questions, please send them over while I'm talking here. But uh, here's our contact information. So if you do the trial the, the uh, software, like we encourage everyone to do, again, it's a free download from our website to take a look at everything. Uh, but go to our website and download the software. If you have any questions as you're setting it up, here's our contact information. So uh, you know, please reach out to us. If you have any feedback on anything as well, reach out to us, let us know. Um, I guess let us know how these webinars are. Uh, is it the content you guys are looking for? All that sort of fun stuff. Um, I don't see any other question. Okay. Uh, yeah, if there's no other questions or, you know, send them over still, but I do again, appreciate everybody showing, uh, jumping on the webinar today, taking some time out of their day. Um, and we, um, are excited for you guys to take a look at Clearstream 7.0 and give us feedback on all of the new stuff that we've done. Um, but please use this contact information to reach out to us, to let us know. 
But with that, I guess if there's no other questions, again, I appreciate you guys showing up. Um, have a great rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you uh, at a future webinar. All right, thanks again, everyone. Bye-bye.